Welcome to my channel. My name is Dale Hawthorne and uh, this is going to be an episode. I'm not going to make this a Big Bang Theory centered channel. So um, this there may be perhaps one or two episodes later, um, but the two which I'm doing on the Big Bang Theory by being gifted in town will probably be sufficient. So the question here is, how realistic was the Big Bang Theory? Well, the short answer is it was a documentary. Not really. <laughs> um, it's a sitcom, definitely very entertaining, good writing, and there are very good reasons why it was the number one rated show in its last years. It took a little while to uh, catch on from what I can remember, but uh, actually uh, it, uh, the fact that it continues to be rerun testifies to its quality. And as far as its realism, yeah, there was a good deal of realism and plausibility throughout the various episodes. Sitcoms do need laughs every uh, few seconds, like I think it's somewhere around 20 to 30 seconds or so. Um, so that's uh, to keep the humor running. So um, real life for someone who's uh, gifted and talented in the high IQ range is entertaining. We do have a real, uh, sometimes wicked sense of humor. But uh, we don't have laughs that quickly and that often in real life. And one thing I am really very glad about the Big Bang Theory is that it tended to avoid stock characters. You know, stock characters that's been a part of comedy since Greek and Roman comedy. People from Aristophanes, Menander, Terence, and Plautus. Yeah, stock characters have been around a long time and they make their appearance in modern comedies to, to kind of give you an idea of what when that person appears on the screen, what they're all about. And uh, the truth is that high IQ people are not all socially inept or unathletic, and they may actually tend to be late bloomers in those areas. They may tend to, uh, uh, somewhat later in life, uh, get into the gym, get into becoming health conscious, uh, um, working on their appearance and their image. And uh, that's, in fact, uh, there's a book which I kind of uh, hesitantly recommend by Brian Gilmartin, which talks about how um, high IQ people, um, primarily technical people, do when they get, get develop work on their image, do find themselves uh, more successful in dating with some practice and some working on their image. But there's some also some weird stuff in that book about past lives and stuff like that, which I, can, I don't endorse at all. But uh, I am glad that with, with all this, with no stock characters, The Big Bang Theory, I'm glad it didn't become a Revenge of the Nerds sitcom. Um, those movies came out, I believe, Revenge of the Nerds in original in 1984. And uh, that still is very entertaining, still is rerun from now on time. And it would have been interesting to see some cameos by Robert Carradine, Anthony Edwards, and some of the act those actors and the characters they played in those movies from time to time in The Big Bang Theory. So, but that would look like we're trying to use the Big Bang Theory to build a nerdiverse or a GTiverse or a giftedverse, something like that. But uh, that would have been interesting. But uh, and I could see Keith Carradine and Robert Carradine and whatever they talk, uh, Robert saying, "Yeah, I should have been on that series myself as well as you." But I'll leave that family uh, quarrel to uh, for them to figure out if they ever happen to hear this vote. What I have to say here. So. Some incidents in throughout the series had me open-mouthed when I was watching it. Just simply, that happened to me. There are at least a dozen that I can think of, both with Leonard and with Sheldon. I don't remember any with uh, Kuthur Pali or uh, uh, Wallowitz that are like that. But, you know, some had the exact words. And there's one episode where Amy Farrah Fowler called non-GT people muggles that's i had a friend who passed away i believe around 2008 or so she yeah she would have been passed away in august 2008 i thought that she coined that so uh there is a lot that does happen which is fairly realistic and they really nailed it not only with her writing but also with the casting jim parsons uh, sheldon is very good and he plays probably the most difficult character there hi hi the people, he's probably the person with the highest IQ of the group, and you do find that th throughout the series. 
He does have some autism spectrum disorder characteristics, some obsessive compulsive tendencies, and people with that high in IQ are pretty rare in real life. I've only uh, been acquainted with a couple, perhaps, uh, even with the exposure I've had with people, other, other people in the high IQ community. Um, so the people that I know with that high in IQ don't have the ASD or obsessive compulsive tendencies, but uh, they've got other problems themselves, not perfect. But the people who do have those characteristics, high IQ and other things, they're known as twice exceptional people. And there's an actually a very good book on that by, uh, by, Do by Dr. Webb. I want to call him James Webb, but that's the name of the telescope, isn't it? But it's called, um, I'll put the link in there. I, I'm about 30 years older than the guys in Bing Bang Theory. Sometimes my memory fails, but I do remember a lot. So, Sheldon, highest IQ, twice exceptional. I would say probably the most difficult part, I would say, of any of them to play. Leonard, played by Johnny Galecki. Uh, I enjoyed him in that role a lot. He's probably the most like me personally, although I think that I... My, my personal IQ would have been somewhere between uh, Sheldon and Leonard, although uh, you can kind of tell from behavior where they are on the skit, on the, even though the GT people are like 2% of the population, you can sometimes tell by behavior where the, where their IQ would actually be a person for the gifted person. And uh, one of the strange parallels with Leonard, remember that crush on Penny, the Midwestern blonde? I had a kamikaze crush on a Midwestern bond named Jenny. <laughs> so these things happen. Raj, played by Kunal Nair. Um, I hope that I pronounced his name correctly. And I had an Indian friend. We're about the same age. He still is a friend. I just haven't seen him in a little while because he's living back in India. But we do contact, uh, connect on Facebook from time to time. He is from about the same age range as Raj. And he thought that um, Kanam and the writers nailed that character. He thought that was so accurate. So uh, Howard Simon Helberg, apparently he's based on a real computer programmer. And uh, I can't say that I've met that many people like Howard. Um, but although... There was one person that I knew years ago who, from a Jewish background, I think was somewhat close to Howard. And what happened to him over the years, he became a Messianic Jew. He came to uh, uh, faith in Christ and continuing on with the Jewishness. And he's now a very happy family man. So there's some parallel there. So in the Big Bang Theory, you do find a lot of references to sci-fi and Star Trek. And certainly... High IQ people love Star Trek generally. Um, they also love Monty Python and the Holy Grail to tendency there in some of the other series. Uh, so it's kind of like escapism. And sometimes the uh, love is almost to fanaticism, escaping to fantasy and sci-fi. I honestly must say sometimes it does seem like an escape from a social life that is not very affirming or rewarding um, into, into those. And just simply... You're able to live in a world where you, can, where you can have whatever you want, and it's very, very addicting, uh, very, a very um, good escape for people who are high IQ. And I personally, I've only been to a Star Trek convention once. I made a joke with my friends that I saw a Klingon gal there who was uh, pretty cute, but I don't date outside my species. No, she was in costume, of course. And I, that's just a joke. And, uh, I did, uh, James Dew and Scotty was there. And uh, when we went down the line, I did let, let a father thought he should do a guest uh, appearance on Friends, which was popular at that time. He thought that was a good idea. So that's, that's about it. Um, Penny, um, Kaylee, Coco. I think, you know, although they carried her throughout the whole series, I think in real life, she might have been uh, something like more than one character. I think in the first years of the series when she was uh, making the rounds of the guys, uh, I think that 
um, she would have really broken his heart and he would have moved on to someone else. Um, she, and that would have been a part of breaking Leonard of his hopeless romanticism and there would have been some considerable re relational trauma from that. Um, but uh, they did carry, carry her on, which was, and she did grow throughout the series. Uh, she's pretty much unrecognizable to me from the person that she was in the first episodes. So um, I don't usually see those kinds of transformations in real life, but uh, I don't know how realistic that was. Uh, my experience is that people who live that life and that when they do get uh, by making the rounds of all the guys, when they do get married, they usually get divorced and usually <laughs> go back to their ways. But um, that would have been Penny in the first years. The middle years of the series, I think that uh, Leonard would have ditched Penny and gone to find someone more appropriate and uh, probably several people and it would have been a learning experience. The people that they put him up with, Leslie Winkle, Sarah Gil played by Sarah Gilbert, Stephanie Barnett, played by Sarah Rue, um, Priya Kutherpolity, R.D. Mann. I thought they were kind of improbable matches for Leonard. It's kind of like it was more chemistry and sexual attraction from him in those cases. That it, uh, it wasn't kind of like him falling in love as Leonard. It did provide a good, di uh, good deal of variety, a lot of laughs, but I don't see much real growth and learning from those experiences except they drove back to Penny. Um, Last year's, I think that he would have bonded with someone much more appropriate, especially if his career had advanced more and he received more credit for the achievements, which he and uh, Sheldon uh, had together. I think an interesting twist would have been in the last years to write out the penny as she was and bring in Kaylee, the same actress, as another character, maybe have her be almost as frumpy as uh, Amy Farrah Fowler was when she was introduced and then have her change. Maybe give her, let her see a picture of, of uh, Kaylee as Penny and have her go through a makeover. Not to make her into another Penny, but to make her into someone um, matured as Penny was, but also someone who was a little bit intellectually more um, comparable for Leonard because Usually what happens with when there's that disparity of IQ in that age range in marriages, usually they don't work very well. And there was kind of that undercurrent sometimes in the, ser in the series where they were talking about how that son or when she would uh, dump him or, or something like that. So, one of the things which I also found very, very funny, but uh, um, they did have the arch enemies of Sheldon who... Um, Barry Kripke, who was actually more like a friend of me, um, John Ross Bowie played it, but he was, he was hilarious. I wish they would have uh, included him a, a little bit more in some of the some places. Uh, Leslie Winkle was Sheldon's arch enemy, and I didn't find her to be a likable character. I don't know Sarah, don't know how she is in real life, but uh, I thought that her character just simply wasn't very likable. Um, there probably would have been characters like that in real life and in the lives of people uh, like the main characters in the Big Bang Theory in real life. But the thing is, the arch energy enemies of the high IQ person, the GT person, aren't people like uh, Kripke and Leslie Winkle. They're pathological narcissists. And this is something I've had a discussion with with one of my friends who uh, he tested for one of the highest IQs in the USA, but I will not speak any more about him because uh, this isn't about him and not about outing him. But uh, there might have been someone as relentless as the Miss Parker on the Pretender series, uh, played by Andrea Parker. Wonderful, wonderful series, wonderful actress. Uh, I'll speak more about that in a sec, in a couple minutes. But uh, there would have been relational trauma from that a long-term unwanted entanglement with such characters. The pathological narcissists tend to stalk the high IQ person, tend to try to ruin their lives. But to understand what's happening there would have turned the series into a tragic comedy or a dramedy. And the targeted character would have been, by the end of the series, a walking wounded person, a person with some um, deep 
wound with maybe even some deep PTSD by that time. So, because it is a time they didn't go that place, I, I appreciate that part because uh, we wouldn't have needed to have been uh, reminded of that. They did was realistic about talking about childhood bullying. That is a real issue in the GT community. And uh, they didn't mention it. Uh, I think that the characters would have had s some more lingering trauma in real life from that in their lives. And uh, there was an episode where they there is a come up as the letters childhood Billy. So that was kind of fun too. So the final episode, talking about the people there. As you're working with people, you tend to value the people you work with. There were some several teams which I worked with over the years. I, you can see the theological books in the back. I am an ordained minister, but I earned my living for 25 years as a software developer, software engineer, and in information technology. So I've had some teams there, diverse teams as far as our backgrounds. But we loved each other. We helped each other. We stood up for each other. And the last team I had, especially one of the brightest teams I worked with, 2019 Team of the Year, where I worked. And that last episode where Sheldon gets up and talks about the other characters, and he says to them, I apologize if I haven't been the friend you deserve. I want you to know in my way I love you all. Those words are from my heart also to the people I work with. And I put a link to that if you want to reprise that in your own life because yes, yes, that does happen. We do live, we do have that in our hearts. We may not be do it from a, the podium of a Nobel Prize ceremony, but we do find that uh, as we work with people, we do find that we accomplish more if we're working with each other, working in teams and able to communicate that. So, if you want to have some more interest in some more um, series which do deal with uh, people from the high IQ era, area, um, high IQ population, the Pretender actually is pretty good, although, you know, the crime finding aspect, really, that's not what we do, but Michael T. Wise played uh, Jared, the autodidact polymath, and the way he was able to, um, his flexibility and learn like that, yeah, yeah, that's re that there are people that are able to make those quick learning and quick adjustments. And uh, here's a book called Super Learning, which deals with uh, uh, how people can do that by the immersion. So he, in the series, it's it's uh, reduced to one week, but uh, people can do that super learning. And there's also another long ago predecessor to the Big Bang Theory, if you haven't seen it, uh, the movie Real Genius, Val Kilmer and uh, uh, Gabe Jarrett and also uh, <laughs> so, some others there you'll recognize such as William Atherton and again that's, that's kind of unrealistic as far as some because it is, but it is really funny and you do find um, the exploitation of the GT people, like, yeah, that happened um, in the series also. It does happen where people try to take the achievements, what, what the GT people create, and exploit that and um, hijack that and sidetrack them. It does happen in real life. And one of the weird things is that there, at the very end, you find a Leonard and Penny-like romance where uh, a character named Sherry Newell played by Patty Darbyville, the, the blonde, and Laszlo Holyfield, played by John Grease, and, uh, and I've asked, math my head off at that. So, but that really does happen. So, hope you enjoy what I put together here. Um, it's my opinions. I don't speak as a, a full authority on anything here. It's just my experience, my opinions. And uh, if you want to put some comments in, fine. Let's let's keep it. Uh, uh, of course, um, respectful. Let's keep it uh, as kind as we can. But uh, hope you enjoyed this. And uh, this may be the last thing I ever record on the Big Bang Theory. But I hope for the actors and the writers and the people behind that that you do find 
your future promising. You do find other things to do, and you do find the best things in life for you. Thank you.